The date is April 30th, 1993, and the number one ranked women's tennis player has just been stabbed in the back with a knife during a match at a tournament in Germany. The attacker, Gunter Parch, used the changeover break as an opportunity to attack, as players at the time sat virtually courtside between games. Though the assault seemed to happen in the blink of an eye, the aftermath set into motion a butterfly effect where one single event would have a momentous impact on the landscape of women's tennis going forward. While the stabbing itself is still remembered by many today, beneath the headlines lies a deeper story of an unmatched rivalry, an attacker that walked free, and the trials, tribulations, and comeback story of a teenager who had her entire life taken from her. This is Monica Sellis. From the moment she played her first professional match as a 14-year-old, Monica Seles was a sight to behold. At 5'4 and 90 pounds, she hit the ball harder than girls twice her size and age, using an extremely unconventional two-handed flat forehand and backhand to create relentless speed, power, and depth behind every shot. Within two years though, a growth spurt helped her shoot up in both height and success, as she went from unranked in 1988 to the number three ranked tennis player in 1990, a year in which she compiled a 36 match winning streak and became the youngest ever French Open champion at 16 years old. Pure dominance would follow from the 91 into the early 93 season, as now number one ranked Monica Seles became the de facto face of women's tennis. During this period, she won a staggering 22 titles and reached 33 finals out of the 34 tournaments she played, compiling a 159-12 win-loss record and winning 7 of the last 8 Grand Slams she played in. Speculation rose as to whether she would eventually surpass the former great Margaret Court's legendary record of 24 Grand Slam singles titles. And considering her incredible mental fortitude and confidence shown on court, she was surely on track to. Yet if there was anyone who wanted that level of success just as much, it was rival Steffi Graf. Having been virtually unbeatable from 1987 to 1990, Graf was faced with a serious dilemma when Celis burst onto the scene, with the latter ending Graf's 66 match winning streak in 1990 and overtaking Graf's number one ranking in 1991, a spot she held for 186 consecutive weeks. Though Graf led their head-to-head -head record 6-4 heading into early 1993, primarily bolstered by early wins over a young teenage Celis in the 1980s, the paradigm shift in women's tennis dominance was unquestionable, with the still teenage sensation simply overpowering and outplaying the rest of her competition. Leading up to the 1993 French Open as a three-time defending champion, Monica Seles entered the Citizen Cup in Hamburg, Germany as a warm-up event to prepare her for the clay court season it would be the last tournament she would enter for two and a half years. I remember sitting there toweling off, and then I leaned forward to take a sip of water. Our time was almost up and my mouth was dry. The cup had barely touched my lips when I felt a horrible pain in my back. My head whipped around towards where it hurt and I saw a man wearing a baseball cap, a sneer across his face. His arms were raised above his head and his hands were clutching a long knife. He started to lunge at me again. I didn't understand what was happening. The man in question was Gunter Parch, who used Monica Seles' close proximity to the stands to carry out his attack, using a 10-inch boning knife to stab her between her shoulder blades to a depth of 1.5 inches. He would have struck again, had he not been subdued by fans and subsequently arrested. Though speculation initially rose that the attack was politically motivated, as Seles hailed from Yugoslavia and thus associated with the Yugoslav Wars, the real motive was soon revealed to be even more bizarre. Parch, as it would turn out, was an obsessive Steffi Graf fanatic, the latter of who had long been the leading German tennis player. Parch revealed that he had became suicidal when he witnessed Celis defeat Graf for the first time at the German Open in Berlin in 1990, and solidified his hatred when Celis was to eventually overtake Graf's hold on the number one ranking. His plan was simple, incapacitate Celis to restore Graf's number one ranking and continued success. Though it is still unclear whether Parch meant to temporarily injure or permanently maim Celis, the teenager escaped total paralyzation due to her last second bending down to drink water, allowing the blade to miss her spinal cord by less than a centimeter. Though her injuries were mostly superficial as a result, with minor surgery allowing the site of injury to heal within weeks, the impact and trauma would massively affect Monica Celis' life going forward, with her real nightmare only just beginning. To start, although doctors predicted a quick recovery, the pain in her shoulder lasted months beyond the finished healing, sidelining the number one player even if she was mentally ready to begin playing again, which was far from the case. 
weeks after the attack, Monica's father and coach, whom she shared a strong bond, was diagnosed with terminal stomach cancer and would die within two years. Whereas Monica would use the tennis court as an escape from her private life in the past, the memories of what happened on one became a personal hell for her, robbing her of solace which thus began an almost permanent hiatus from tennis. To cope, Monica turned to food as an escape from reality, beginning what would turn into a years-long struggle with a binge eating disorder. Seeking professional psychiatric help, the mental trauma she faced was given an official name, post-traumatic stress disorder, a mental health condition triggered by uncontrollable thoughts about a terrifying event. Despite her path to mental recovery, an ongoing trial halfway across the world resurfaced past demons as the German court came to a verdict, no jail time for Gunter Parch. The conclusion drawn by the ruling judge was that Parch had only intended to quote, put her temporarily out of action so that his adored Stephanie, as he called her, could regain her number one spot. In addition to his full confession and lack of prior criminal record, Parch received a two-year suspended sentence for grievous bodily harm and walked free. Monica lost an appeal to retry him for the crime, and also lost a lawsuit against the German Tennis Federation for a lack of security and lost income. To make matters worse, following the attack, players on the women's tour were given an opportunity to vote on whether, in respect of the unique circumstances, the still teenage Salas's ranking should be retained until more was known about her condition. The decision was firm, a unanimous no, and Monica fell out of the rankings, as if she was never there. Finally, in an ironic twist, Celis's absence from the tour did allow Steffi Graf to retake the number one ranking immediately, and the German would finish her career as one of the most decorated women's tennis players of all time, winning 22 Grand Slam singles titles and thoroughly dominating the sport for the rest of the 1990s. Despite her pain and suffering, the once mighty force of female tennis was known for one thing on court and in life, self-belief and the determination to never give up. And with that, Monica Celis returned to professional tennis in August 1995, 28 months after the attack, and didn't look back. Monica's win at the 1996 Australian Open would be her final Grand Slam title, and despite her continued success on tour until her unofficial retirement in 2003, many still contend that if not for the attack, she just might have been the greatest female tennis player to ever exist. The ordeal she was put through not only highlights the shortcomings of tournament safety when dealing with crazed fans, but gave the public an early glimpse of how top-of-the-world athletes and celebrities deal with an unspoken crisis affecting many today – mental health issues. Though she may have had the best years of her career taken from her, Monica Seles will always be remembered not just as the teenager who took the world by storm, but the one who fought for everything when that storm turned against her.